Hello again and welcome back. Um, so last time uh, we managed to try the Sterling Engine project. Um, I'm whispering because it's quite early in the morning. I don't want to wake anybody up. Um, it did run. I'm quite surprised it ran, um, but it's still got quite a few problems that um, I think I need to solve. Um, and hopefully um, we can improve the power a little bit more and um, get it running a little bit better. So the biggest safety concern is that it can't actually stop the engine. When we operate this lever here, which operates this valve here, it lets the air out. But the um, the problem is there's so many leaks in the engine that it just doesn't actually stop. So what I want to do is try and solve some of the leaks. Um, also, if I solve some of the leaks, I should bother increase the power of the engine as well. What I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to do a um, compression check as well to see what the compression ratio is. Um, the standard compression ratio for a Sterling engine is normally 1 to 1.5. Um, that's running at normal sort of uh, um, fire fire temperatures. So if the hot sub is 500 to 600 degrees, that that would be the kind of ratio that you want to be running. Another thing I want to look at is the drive chain. Um, when we ran the test, we actually broke the tension off tension off the thing. Um, so I'm hoping to um, to solve that as well. So there you go. I've taken a, I put a, a half link in the chain to shorten the chain a little bit, and I've replaced the tensioner with a. Uh, a stronger version so hopefully that should be right as long as I don't drop it in the gear when the engines going flat out I shouldn't have any problems with that I've just fitted this pressure gauge to the engine um, this is going to help us um, measure the, the pressure within the engine so I'm just going to spin it over a minute and see what happens so I saw about a uh, 0 0.25 bar I reckon um, so that would be a 1 to 1.25 compression ratio, so a little bit low. Um, luckily, there is actually um, dead space within the engine that I can uh, uh, I can basically fill up with a some material. Um, and also, I can stop some of the leaks as well, which will also increase the compression ratio. So I reckon, I think we'll probably be all right once those problems are sorted out. So I've sealed up some of the holes um, in the heat exchanger. I've used super glue, actually. Or a, or a particular type of super glue uh, it's safe up to 250 celsius um so i thought that might might be okay uh some of the dead space i've actually filled in with silicon sealant uh silicon sealant is um is is pretty heat uh resistant as well so there we go all back together again let's see if our compression ratio has improved Yeah, so um, yeah, so slight improvement. So the compression ratio is now uh, 1.4 to 1. So that's uh, it is in the ballpark. I was aiming for 1.5, which is kind of the uh, Sterling Engine standard compression ratio you should be looking for. Um, but I'm quite happy because um, we don't have any air, air leaks anymore. I can't hear any. You know, when I turn it over, I can't hear any air leaks. So. Um, as long as it stays leak free, um, hopefully it should run a little bit better. Um, yeah, what I might do is I might put some more elastic bands on the um, the pre-tensioners um, so that will actually balance the engine a bit more. And um, then I think we'll give it another go again. I do. Right, so it's, um, it's just warming up at the moment. Um, as you can see, uh, the exhaust is a bit smoky. Um, I'm not sure if that's the wood or uh, or residue uh, moisture within the engine, but I'm sure that will uh, stop soon. Um, it's not really designed to burn wood. Um, we'll start putting some of the smokeless coal in, in a minute. Right, so um, I'm going to try the stop valve again to see if um, it works this time. So I'm uh, moving the stop valve, so it's stopping the air sucking in and exhausting all the air it can through the one-way valve. Uh, so the engine is technically exhausted all the air it can, um, but it's still not stopping. Um, uh, I imagine at the moment it's running on a partial vacuum cycle. Uh, I think that is, if you hear, listen to the, um, the flapping of the uh, diaphragms, I think that's because it's under vacuum. 
Yeah, so um, yeah, it still doesn't actually work at the moment, so we're going to have to uh, be revisit on that. I mean, I'm sure it would have depowered the engine somewhat um, when we're running around the railway in a minute. Um, we'll see We'll see if that is actually the case, or whether this does actually slow the slow, slow it down. Um, I think you'll find if, I'm, if I close this valve again, so it's sucking air back into the engine, it's under pressure, uh, the diaphragms are um, uh, full with air all the time now. Um, it certainly it stops the flapping anyhow. Um, I'd imagine the engine would be running at a, a more powerful output in, in that position. Alright, so we've had the engine running around the garden, but unfortunately there isn't a great deal of heat in the firebox. Um, I've been running anthracite uh, coal, which is obviously people know is a high grade coal with a lot of energy in it um, but the only problem is it does seem to need a lot of draft for it to really get the heat there um, the, this chimney is quite a short chimney it doesn't seem to have a great deal of draft um, last time we used the uh, this, like the smokeless coal you know the briquettes you get the modern the modern stuff they use um, that seemed to get a lot of heat um, we're going to abandon the test for the day but we'll, we'll come back and, um, and give it another go with the uh, with a different fuel I think Okay, so this is a coal that wouldn't burn very well. Um, so this is uh, described as premium wealth uh, anthracite, large nuts. Now, this has very high um, uh, heat output. Uh, it says here, suitable for multi-fuel stoves, closed appliances, and cookers. Um, if you look at it, it's very, uh, it's very shiny. Uh, high carbon content, high energy content, but the only problem with it, it's very, um, it's very awkward to light, as we, uh, as we saw with the engine. Um, I've done a bit more research into it, um, and this coal requires quite a high draft to actually work properly. The problem is we, we don't get a great draft um, with the Sterling engine. So what I've done is I've bought this uh, stuff here. It's called Oxbow Red. This is available in the UK. It's a fairly high, high quality um, fuel. Um, but this is uh, this is basically house coal. Um, now, as I read, it's got more um, uh, natural uh, volatiles in it, um, so it will self-sustain itself. Um, and here at the bottom, it's suitable for multi-fuel stoves, open fires, and closed appliances. Um, so it will actually keep it, if you if you put a pile of it somewhere and lit it, it would actually keep itself going. Um, it looks a bit different than the other stuff, less shiny. So we shall give this a go and see what happens. There we go, that's the kind of temperatures we're looking for. So you can see the stainless steel there is just starting to glow a little bit. Right, so now I'm just going to do a bit of a load test to see how much it will pull. Um, so I've loaded up with some heavy items. So we've got a piece of railway track, um, a mostly full bag of uh, coal, a few flywheels, another bag of coal, a heavier flywheel, um, and some bits of wood, and the rest of the wagons. So there you go, that's enough playing around for today. Um, I'm quite happy actually, it's, uh, as long as you get a nice hot red fire, um, then it's quite surprising um, what it can achieve actually. Um, so I believe the next video now will be the actual dynamometer run, and um, we, we, we should see what the power is. It still not, may not be a great deal, because you've got to remember this thing is geared down uh, quite a lot really. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. Till next time, bye bye.